Okay, so once again, we uh, good afternoon. We are in the second part of our uh, lecture about sum, summative assessment. So in this morning, I have discussed uh, the definition of summative assessment when the summative assessment is used. Uh, I have shown you the table of specification, uh, how, it, uh, how it looked like, and then uh, the milk, uh, the book, or the compilation where the milk is being taken and then the content of the uh, the milk and then we have the pivot budget of work and then what is inside the pivot budget of work and then we have the bloom's taxonomy as very essential uh, things that uh, we should prepare in uh, making the table of specification so we, we are now into item construction as i said before we start the uh, construction of the item uh, for summative assessment, there should be uh, there should be a table with specification, and uh, the item construction can can be started even before uh, the time of the instruction. So in here, we're going to develop what we call an item bank. So what is an item bank? An item bank is uh, a compilation or a database of test item that you can use uh, in a subject before you start the instruction or before the start of the teaching and learning process. Okay, so in the item construction, as I said, we're going to, uh, to prepare a table of specification and then we're going to look at the MELC. So I have here an example. So this is for the subject introduction to philosophy of human person or pambungad sa uh, philosophy ng tao. I have here the most essential learning competencies. So you see it uh, in our uh, illustration. So the first one is distinguish a holistic perspective from partial point of view. So that is for week one and for uh, and another one realize the value of doing philosophy and obtaining a broad perspective on life and the third one do a philosophical reflection on a concrete situation from holistic perspective so what does it mean for a week there are three milks you know okay so here is it in the table of specification so quarter one week one and two so we have distinguished it is here realize the value of doing philosophy it is here and then do a philosophical reflection so this is for week one uh, and because uh, week one should be uh, or one there there should be four hours uh, for one week so we have to divide we have to divide uh, four uh, four four hours divided by three milk and the result is 1.33 hours per uh, 1.33 uh, 1 hours per milk. So that is the number of hours uh, that milk should be taught. You know? Okay, so 1.33 hours. And for every milk, because we need to have 15 items, we need to have 15 items for each uh, for uh, each week, and there are 3 milk, so we, have, we need to have 5 milk five items for every milk so we have here the first milk we will have five items the second we have five and then uh, the third we have also five i put it here that uh, the first milk is one to five the second milk is six to ten and the third milk is eleven to fifteen although it does not happen that way because sometimes we we rumble the number of items uh, to prevent uh, leakage uh, during the examination. So each milk sh shall have 16.66 percent, 16 16.66 percent, which when added corresponds to 50 percent, 50 percent of the total number of items and for week two there are only two milk 
So distinguish opinion from truth, evaluate truth from opinions in different situation using the methods of philosophizing. So there are only two, so that is even, so uh, two hours per mil. And because two hours, so we're going to choose, we're going to have seven uh, as, uh, we're going to divide the 15. So one will take seven items and the other one will take eight. So it's up to you to decide uh, which one will take the eight and which one will take the seven. And then in the computation, one is 25% and another is 25%. So when we have the the total, so that is 100%. So how do you know based on the cognitive domain whether it's going to be remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating? So you're going to use once again, okay, so you're going to use once again the Bloom's taxonomy. Let's start with the first one. Distinguish a holistic perspective from the partial point of view. You have the verb distinguish. So you have to look it in the Bloom's taxonomy. So you're going to, to find it here. Is it in remembering? Is there uh, dis, uh, distinguish, uh, understanding, applying, or analyzing? So you find it here in this... Uh, Distinguishing is analyzing. So according to Bloom's taxonomy, distinguishing is analyzing. And that is the word used in the milk. So distinguish, and then there is the word distinguish in, uh, in the Bloom's taxonomy. So meaning the item that you're going to write for, for that is analysis. So that's why in... In my table of specification, one to five, distinguishing a holistic perspective from a partial point of view, one to five is analyzing. So, meaning I'm going to construct five items about analyzing. Now, my question is, that is question number one. Let's go. Distinguish a holistic perspective from a partial point of view. Question number one, partial point of view is evident when you see a reality using A, B, C, D. Uh, if you look at this, I have uh, six, uh, six choices. So this is a multiple choice type of test. And we are expecting that, the sub, uh, that for each subject, you're going to do a multiple uh, choice type of assessment. Actually... In this sample, the, this is the sample that uh, we use in the regional training. In this sample, we have four probable answer. One is exact answer. And two are uh, what we call in Filipino pangulo or extra. You know? So that means if you do not really know anything about the subject, you have the tendency to choose that pangulo. And the correct answer is single perspective. Now, we will discuss later whether... This question, number one, is really analyzing. A partial point of view is evident when you see a reality using. So it's a uh, sentence completion test. Okay? So this, uh, take a look at the milk. Distinguish a holistic perspective from partial point of view. Our topic is holistic perspective. And then the test item is about partial point of view. Now let's take a look at our... Next example. Question number three is holistic perspective. See, holistic perspective is the topic of the milk. It's more objective than partial point of view because it looks at reality using, again, the test is a sentence completion type of test. But if you look at it, there is already an, uh, there is already a comparison, uh, holistic and partial point of view more objective. Huh? They are saying that holistic perspective is more objective than partial point of view because so there is reasoning. And again, I am using six uh, choices and I have here the correct answer. Number four, Mr. Lopez, the principal conducted an investigation on the quarreling case between Hector and Mario to arrive at an objective conclusion of the case who should use the holistic perspective? So if you look at this, this is not simply remembering fact, but this is 
uh, applying or uh, uh, trying to think where that holistic perspective can be used. So again, I use the six uh, choices and I have the correct answer. Uh, please, uh, when you submit your uh, when you submit your uh, summative assessment for validation to your uh, master teacher or the key teacher who shall validate it, make sure you have the correct answer. You know? Okay. Now, you will notice from the three items that I have, so you have the first one, partial point of view is evident when you see a reality using. So it seems that very it is very simple. Is it analyzing? You may think it is not. Because based on my table specification, I need to have five items for this milk using analyzing. But if you look at my example, it seems that the first example itself is not analyzing. Why? Huh? Yes, it is really not analyzing, but rather it is just remembering. But why did I use remembering? Actually, in constructing a summative assessment uh, like this, you can use what we call scaffolding. What does it mean? Before you make an item about uh, making an analysis as required by the milk, you can slowly get into analyzing by introducing a more simple or an S or an easier uh, items which could be from remembering or understanding or uh, applying before you go to the main focus, which is analyzing. In other words, pa into into this kamuna, uh, so nakita niya natin in this item, uh, we try to introduce partial point of view. You know? Next, we compare. And then, the analysis is here. You know? So, naroon na yung analysis. Although, in uh, question number three, there is already an analysis. But, just the question number one. So, this, this is very basic. It is only remembering and it is not analyzing. But, why do I have remembering? As I said, I am scaffolding. Scaffolding meaning unti-unti kong tinataas sa level ng analyzing. Because, there is an assumption that you cannot simply analyze if you do not apply, if you do not understand, and if you do not remember. Ano? So yung basic, mag pwedeng mag-umpisa doon, and then into analyzing. So depending on your validator, pag ni-require ng validator na, oh sige, uh, if you have uh, five for uh, milk, milk number one, if you have five, you can have two for analyzing, one for understanding, and two for uh, remembering uh, nasa sa inyo ng kasunduan yun o kaya, kaya il ilalagay mo na agad na exactong analyzing and the validator could understand that you are doing the scaffolding ano? so ganun po okay so let's go back to uh, the second milk realize the value of doing philosophy in obtaining broad perspective on life okay so you have the the keyword realize. Now, let's take a look at the Bloom's taxonomy. So you're going to scan. Remembering, is there a word realize? Is there a word realize? Is there a word yeah, realize? So what if you do not have the word realize? Then, yeah, what did I do? I find the synonym of the word realize in the Google and then according to the Google there are many uh, synonyms and I choose understand so that's why I make it understanding okay so realize so I constructed an item so I, I have milk number two realize the value of doing philosophy and obtaining 
a good a broad perspective on life. So the domain understanding studying philosophy is important for the following reasons except so that is the structure of the test uh, except meaning all other choices agree with the statement except one and the answer is letter e so with that you can you cannot answer correctly if you do not understand the third melt, do a philosophical reflection on a concrete situation from a holistic perspective. See, do. So what does it mean? You're going to create. Huh? So the domain is creating. Question number seven, Alita is confronted with the counseling problem as a result of the failure of her client to operate during consultation session. Using the philosophical process, which action shall she take first? See, how can you create? Are they going? We are using the uh, we are using the multiple uh, choice type of test. Are they going to create? Are they going to draw? Are they going? So you put them in the situation wherein you will require them to do something, and from among the choices, which one will the person do? And that is creating, you know. So, paganon, and then we I have the correct answer. So, uh, the question is using the philosophical process, which action shall she take first? Examine the argument, construct her own sound and valid opinion, justify her own argument, asking question on the client for non cooperation, establish own logical and rational opinion, analyzing argument. So, in other words, which one will you do first and that is creating so that is for milk number three so that is for um, realize the value of doing philosophy in obtaining uh, perspective so emily hindi narini pala yun do a philosophical so that is uh, creating so 1 to 15, so it's up to you if all the items that you're going to write, that you're going to prepare are all creating or you do the scaffolding, it's okay. Doing the scaffolding, you know? Okay, now let's have the next. So how are you going to distribute, to distribute your items? So the items could be, uh, what do you call it? You're go, uh, the, the items could be in order. So one to five for uh, the first melt. It's okay, but as I said, uh, there is a possibility that the student could, uh, could easily supply answer to other uh, students or uh, for leakage. At the same time, you can do the, you can rumble the items. So in my sample, I have a for milk number one, I place a first item as number two, another item in number four, another item in number eight, and another item in number 12, and the last item in, is in number 15. For milk number two, I have the first item, number one, the second item, number five, third, number seven, and fourth, number nine. So you can submit your table of specification like this. So in that case, the validator could uh, easily find uh, where did you put the item that matched the milk uh, based on your TOS. So he can easily check, verify if it is really analyzing or it is just remembering or he can easily understand it. Uh, ah, nag scaffold, nag scaffolding uh, si madam, kaya ganun ang kanyang test no okay now what are other options we have what we call contextualized assessment ano a contextualized assessment a contextualized assessment is a type of assessment where the literacy or numeracy content is relevant to your learners because it relates to the context that you teach what does it mean uh, in a simple manner in mathematics for example 
you can have uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 1 equals blank. That is, the answer is 2. But it is, is it in a context? Or you just have the idea? Or in English, you have uh, the subject must agree with the verb in number, uh, in tense and in number, something like that. Uh, you feel uh, you have it a sentence completion test. Uh, the subject should agree with the verb in tense and in blank. So, sasagot ng bata number. Bakit? Na-memorize niya yun. Is it in the context? Wala. You put it in a context. Meaning, you put it in a situation. So, for example, you are choosing, you are using, you, your subject is language, but the content is in uh, social studies. But the content is in physics. But the content is in uh, DRRM. So, that is what we call contextualized. No? So, in the example that I have shown you, yeah, question number one. Partial point of view is evident when you see a reality using, see, that is not contextualized. Bakit? This is philosophy, the definition, the meaning per se. You know? So that is not contextualized. But when I have Mr. Lopez, the principal who conducted an investigation and the quarreling case between Hector and Mario, so I put the problem, I put the idea within the situation that is contextualized. What is the advantage of contextualized? Actually, when you are doing, uh, when they are constructing tests in NAT, National Achievement Test, most of the time, the items are contextualized, even uh, in board exam. Because the idea is, if you understand the milk, if you understand what the milk is saying, you do not have to be factual. Ano? Meron kasing teacher na ang basis ng exam ay factual. Kung anong in-explain niya, kung anong ginamit niya nung siya ay nagturo, yun ang kukuha na niya ng exam. So, kung yung ibang estudyante ay hindi naka-attend sa kanyang klase, hindi niya alam yun. Ano? Hindi, niya, hindi niya alam yun. Like for example, uh, ang dinidiscuss political science, and then they discuss a uh, monarchy. Eh, ang nakalagay sa milk ay very, very, ano, very, very uh, general. Uh, the concept of monarchy. Ang inexplain ni teacher ay monarchy ng Japan. Pero ang definition na nakalagay sa milk ay based sa monarchy ng, uh, ng Britain. So, pag kumuha ang estudyante ng test at hindi niya narinig yung monarchy ng Japan, uh, hindi siya makakakuha ng mataas na score. Hindi siya makakatama doon. Because the teacher based his test in facts. Ano? So, it should be contextualized. Ano? That applies and uh, that means the idea is there. Kahit saan mo i-apply, naroon yun. Kahit anong situation mo gawin, Naroon yun. That is contextualization in uh, in uh, constructing test items. Uh, actually, they, they are not requiring uh, us to have the test in that uh, level. Medyo mahirap. Napakahirap nung yan eh. Napakahirap nung i-construct. Okay. And then, other than contextualize, we have the integrative assessment. Integrative assessment is designed to combine students' learning from multiple modules and or levels into a sing, single assessment. Katulad din yun, contextualized and integrative. You integrate this topic in another subject. Just like this one, ito medyo uh, kakaiba ito. Ito yung workshop namin sa region. Ang subject, uh, ang learning area, introduction to philosophy, but it is integrated into economics. Ano? So you have the milk demonstrate the virtues of prudence and frugality towards environment. Uh, thinking skills, forming opinions, and making decisions. So iba yung aming TOS. 
Uh, we have factual, conceptual, procedural, uh, application, analysis, yan. Uh, evaluating, creating, metawag yan, metacognitive, metacognitive 2 and 3. Okay. So what is the test item? Mr. Almerol initiated the parole making contest last December 2019. Ano nga? Demonstrate the virtues of prudence and frugality. Required the student to use recyclable waste material. In the end, he was disappointed and did not recommend the same activity in the year that follows. Mr. Almirol's disappointment could be caused by his findings that there are few recyclable waste materials around. Students do not have enough money to buy recyclable waste materials. Students had spent for goods in order to have recyclable waste materials and students cannot easily find recyclable waste material. When we talk about recyclable material, it is about economics. It is about what? It is about science. Ano? In the second test question, there is a 500 square meter vacant lot at the back of the building in your school. The principal proposed that it be converted into something more productive. What will you suggest? Uh, use it as a playground. Yan, uh, that is the type of test. Integrative. You integrate it with uh, another subject. You, know? you have the subject philosophy, but it is integrated in another subject. Or you may have subject physics integrated in another subject. Or you may have uh, the subject literature, but discuss uh, discussing about uh, nature, or you may have creative writing but discussing uh, about other topic, about love, about romance, about death, etc. So that is what we call integrative uh, integrative assessment. So that's all. I hope I have helped. I was able to help you uh, preparing an assessment type of uh, an assessment or in constructing uh, test question for our summative assessment. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon.